Hey everyone, and welcome back to Maple Syrup Tech. We're looking at another episode of Retro Rescue today, and what we're going to basically be doing is replacing some NES batteries. Because if some of you guys don't know, a lot of NES carts back in the day, before flash memory, used batteries to keep your save games on the cartridge. Dragon Warrior is one of the best examples of one of the early Nintendo games that used this system. And I have a couple of copies here, and we're going to be replacing batteries on both, as well as doing a cleanup on the carts. Now, I got these as a steal, because basically the guy that owned it, uh, he had both. He actually bought one because one stopped saving, and he wanted to continue playing Dragon Warrior, which was one of his favorite games. He bought a second copy. Second copy stopped saving, so... Uh, I got it at a garage sale for a couple of bucks each, so basically four dollars for both, which isn't, you know, it, it's it, it's not a bad rate for Dragon Wa Dragon Warrior. It's not a very expensive game, but I thought it would be really interesting for a video for you guys and just to show you that just because an NES game has stopped saving doesn't mean that the game is actually broken. It just means that you need to replace the batteries on it. And contrary to my, you know, the guy I bought these from. Uh, for less than a dollar a battery, you can actually get some with the standoffs already installed, as the ones I have here. And we're going to look at replacing it uh, theoretically the right way, because there's a lot of people that uh, do it different ways. We're going to be looking at sol soldering the batteries directly into the carts. So keep close and let's start by looking at what we'll need in our kit today to do the cleanup and the soldering of uh, the batteries. So first for our cleaning kit, uh, it's the normal cleaning kit we use every time. Uh, I didn't break out the Brasso this time because I already took a look at the PCBs and they're in pretty good shape so we won't need it for this cleaning kit. Um, however, if you guys want to see in-depth cleaning, I really would refer you to the video on my channel on how to uh, clean and repair uh, NES carts because we'll really go step by step. In this video, the cleaning process will be sped up because I really want to focus on the battery replacement aspect and I don't want it to turn out to be a 40 minute video. So uh, our general kit is some cotton swabs. We have a used toothbrush. We have some WD-40. We have some isopropanol alcohol here in this spray bottle. We have our uh, white vinegar and we have a scouring pad like you use for your dishes. Uh, we also have the game bit driver obviously here. So now just let's go look at uh, a tad at the kit more specifically for the battery replacement. So the couple of extra things we'll need for this specific repair. So here we are now looking at the specific kit for the battery replacement. Now, the primarily this kit is broken down into two. The essentials that you absolutely need is obviously the soldering iron. You'll need also a little bit of solder and highly recommended a pair of tweezers. However, if you want to make this repair a lot easier and a lot uh, cleaner, I also recommend having some flux and either a solder pump or some a cleaning wick, a copper cleaning wick for uh, picking up the old solder before you resolder the new battery. But these three items you can get away with without using them if uh, you don't mind your job being a tiny bit less clean or just a little bit more difficult. So let's move on and uh, first do a quick clean and then we'll move on to the battery replacement. Okay, so here we are, ready to change our battery. So we, we have two to change today. I'm only going to show you the first one simply because repeating over the exact same steps twice are just going to be really boring for you, and it's the second game. So we're going to be looking at the first in a step-by-step -step process. Then the second one I'm just going to change, and then we're going to test the games to see if they're saving or not. So first thing that I had to do, and if you have the flux, I would highly recommend this. 
you play, uh, place some flux on the back part of, this is basically where your battery connects. Now what flux does is it just lowers the temperature that your solder will melt at. Basically it's a compound that when you mix it with sol solder, what it does it actually lowers the temperature where it becomes liquid, making it easier for you to remove the excess solder. solder. And I'll be honest with you guys, removing the battery is the hard part of this process. Putting in the new one is actually a lot simpler than removing it. So all you're going to want to do is you're going to want to touch where your battery meets your solder. Try to get your solder liquid and then you put your pump and like that you suck up the solder that was holding your old battery in. Like that, a couple of times. Just try to get all the solder. There shouldn't be too much on there. Move over to the next step. There we go. And you should have most of your solder off. Now if you have a copper wick like I do, I would actually recommend you can always go over a second time with your copper wick. What you do is you heat your copper wick right next to it and what it's going to do is it's going to really suck up that solder if there's, solder if there's any left. So there doesn't seem to be any left on that side. Or if there was, there was very little and it got sucked up. Uh, seems to be a little bit left there. Got it off. A little bit left on this side. If you guys can see this well, trying to do it as clear as I can on the camera. I'm just going to refocus quick, make sure that you guys are getting the best focus possible. And we're just going to touch it on this side, suck up as much as we can. Now this is just all to make your job easier because we're still going to have to apply some pressure on the battery but the less solder you have left on the battery the easier the next step is going to be. Okay. It actually seems to be a little bit stuck here. Give me a sec. I'm just going to work on this one. I'm just going to flip it like this. See here there seems to be a little bit of solder, solder here. Just gonna heat it up really nice. Make sure that the copper has the chance to suck it all up. Okay, that looks good. So now the next step is probably the hardest of all. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your tweezers. Okay, and we're gonna try and show this. What you're going to need to do is you need to place it in bit underneath your battery but not touching any other components and all you're going to want to do is you're going to want to apply pressure on the battery like this to pull it away from the PCB and you're going to make sure that your that your solder legs that the battery legs are really very very straight because what we're going to do is we're going to heat the solder as we're applying pressure and it, we're going to try and pry the battery off. So, now you want to apply quick bursts of heat, but not too much because you don't want to damage the PCB. Heat can be bad if you get too much. Basically, we're going to try and pry the battery off. Like I said, getting the battery off is actually the hardest part the whole process. This one's being really stubborn. Uh, it has some solder, solder here on the inside, that's why. Okay, so give me a sec. We're gonna have to clean up. Sometimes you can get some solder that went through onto the front of your connectors. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do the same thing we did on the other side. We're just going to push our copper wick into there and move the solder.
same thing here on this side. This one's being stubborn, so what we're gonna do, it's actually fun that we're getting one that's stubborn like this, because you can see the extra steps you can do. We're gonna put a little bit of flux down there. It's gonna help us, like I said, lower the temperature it takes to get that solder to liquefy and it's gonna help attract it to our copper here. Okay, so let's try this again. So we're going to, like I said, place it Gonna heat up our pin and we're gonna apply some pressure. And there we go, one pin off. And now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And there we go. We've got that battery off. So it wasn't the cleanest job in the world, but we got it done. Like I said, desoldering is actually three times harder than soldering itself. So now what we're gonna do is just take a fresh battery from our pack Now, the top side of the battery you can see here is the positive, okay? And don't follow, you're gonna see a positive sign here on your PCB, okay? Indicating that this is the positive side of the battery. Now, don't be mistaken, even though the positive is on this side of the battery, it's actually the top of the battery that's positive. So what you wanna make sure is that the leg that is contacting the positive side is matching to your positive side in there. Now all you're gonna do is you're gonna to wanna to slip the battery through both holes. Oops, slipped out there. Okay. And when we're on the back here, what I recommend is you take the battery legs and you flip them out like that. Why? Because it's gonna hold your battery in place. You're not gonna have to worry about your battery going anywhere while you're soldering. Now, once again, like I said, flux is your friend. So I put a little bit on there. You can actually turn down your soldering iron now at this point. I put it at 400 approximately when I'm desoldering. You want a little bit extra heat for desoldering, but for soldering, 350 is more than enough. And basically what we're gonna do now is we're gonna heat the battery leg. I'm gonna drop a little solder on there. And you're just gonna solder that leg in on each side. Now we're just gonna clean it up here. all nice and flat like that. 
not gloopy. For that, what you just want to do is you want to heat the pad evenly. After you get the solder on there. And there we go. We have our battery replaced. Now after you're done all that, I recommend taking some isopropyl alcohol once again and just going back over on the battery because you want to actually clean out the solder, uh, the flux, sorry about that guys, because flux can be somewhat corrosive if you leave it on there. So we don't want any corrosion on our PCBs. So boom. We have a nice clean job and our batteries were placed and you don't have to have any scotch tape or anything like that because some people just tape batteries in or they detach and they try to re-solder the original uh, legs on the batteries which I don't recommend. You have a high chance of damaging the battery doing that. And there we have it, one replaced battery. So now I'm going to do the other one really quick and then we're going to test our carts to make sure they save our games. So here we are with our two Dragon Warrior carts back together and uh, the one with the damaged back label I even managed to clean up pretty decently, got all the uh, sticker marks off uh, and even the small X that was at the top in marker that came off with some isopropyl alcohol, just a little bit of rubbing with the toothbrush. So we have two really nice games set up. And uh, just to save you guys the time, I already save, have set up a save game on each one. As you can see, they aren't in the system right now, meaning that if the battery replacement hadn't worked, we would have already lost our save games on both. Uh, and I'm using this top loader here just so you guys can see that, uh, you know, it is functional. So let's start with our first uh, game, our first Dragon Warrior. Let's set it in the console, get it in there nice. Since we are using a Retro Duo top loader, it is a little bit iffy on the games. There we go. So we've got it properly started up. Push our start button and we can continue the quest I set up with my AAAAA. So that was just to save you guys the five minutes it takes to get to the point where you can actually talk to the king and save a game. So we've got one Dragon Warrior working now save games work and everything hold down the reset turn off to protect the battery which is by the way the way you should do it for nes carts if you want to make sure to not cause a short it's not very common but it can happen and now let's test our second dragon warrior make sure it's in there nice eh, iffy again like i said Retro Duos, not my favorite gaming system when you want constant plays, but I want you guys to be able to see that it's the right carts. And there we go. We've got to start it up nice. And once again, we can continue our quest. So, as you guys can see, replacing batteries on a Nintendo cart, if you do it the right way, can get you games that will work for years and years to come. It'll give you a much cleaner job than doing it with tape, and especially if one day you want to sell your games back or if you want to exchange them to collectors. If they open up the carts and they see some duct tape or whatnot holding a battery in, I'll tell you right away it's a deal breaker for me where I'm going to give you less value on your cart. So, I hope you guys like this episode of Retro Rescue. Please like and subscribe, it does help the channel a lot. And I'll see you guys in the next video.